Good to have you all back for another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, which happens to be our 228th one. And we're broadcasting live again from three different parts of the world with you to Soto in your Bishop Museum in Honolulu, Hawaii. Welcome back. How do you do? Nice to be here. Good to have you back. We got you back from your little town last Day off. week. Yeah, exactly. And from his Long Beach, California, we have Ron Lindgren back. Hi, Ron. Hello. And, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to see DeSoto back. His affability and knowledge is the glue that holds this program together. <laughs> That's nice. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. And me, uh, uh, wouldn't you wish so? Still back in uh, Munich, Germany, near Munich, Germany. And so we are. If we can get the first slide up, please. Uh, we're still operating under various uh, scenarios that Jay reminds us with multiple um, talks and presentations that they're intertwined, which is first and foremost uh, COVID and climate change. Uh, but we also have civility on the rise, which we will talk about. And this is the last volume of our sequence of happenings for reasons. There are actually wet happenings for reasons. And one very recent one um, happens to be um, a wave, we're not only having the Omicron COVID wave ahead of us, which, um, but we also had a more natural wave that was a tsunami. And that was from an underground volcano near Tonga that had some pretty serious impact there. And also we thought would have a serious impact uh, up to us in Hawaii, which luckily didn't happen to that degree. And uh, you this sort of went back to uh, the place we've been talking about quite a bit, which is your Halikolani, Ron, and something we already sort of um, assessed. Uh, you were able to take a picture and impression from inside because you took a couple of friends to the Halikolani um, a couple of days ago. And, and maybe, again, we commented on that, but maybe one last strike on what we see here. Ron. Well, yeah, well, let me just also just say to this, since I took the picture, this is the Halikulani has always been situated on a seawall. It never had a beach in front of it or not for very, very many, many years. But unfortunately, now with increased uh, water levels in the sea, we now see that the ocean is encroaching onto the hotels of Waikiki. So this is their stopgap measure to try to keep out high waves at the Holy Kulani in which they've put up a plywood wall, they've banked sandbags against it, they've put a strip of astroturf across the top, and then they've planted naupaka and a small beach vine, which is called pa'uohi'iaka, to hopefully grow over that mound, make it less unattractive looking for everybody inside the Holy Kulani, and also provide this very stopgap measure that looks like they're trying to keep the Mississippi from overflowing in the middle of the North American continent. Since you're just sharing with us Hawaiian terms, um, please help us out with, because we also have an underground volcano in Hawaii, yes. Uh, yes. which the name is? Loihi. And Loihi, oh. fortunately, is not going to blow up the way the volcano near in the nation of Tonga did uh, for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's way farther deeper in the ocean still. But the amazing thing, as you said, Martin, is that this eruption and the resulting underwater landslide created as a tsunami that went all around the Pacific. And it uh, killed two people on the coast of Peru. It affected Japan. It affected Australia. It affected California, which Ron will tell us about. And the sound of the explosion of the volcano was heard all the way in Alaska which is astonishing. And as we said, you know, there was some damage here, but in California, in some of the harbors and marinas, there was really noticeable wave action. And it's astonishing to think how far that wave traveled. Yeah, and all these events would take this sort of pretty desperate thing away in no time, right? What they're building Unfortunately, yes. On the West Coast, uh, the 50-foot tsunami waves that Tonga 
it, the Tongan Islands themselves experienced became three foot waves along uh, the California coast. There was some minor flooding damage, uh, but the biggest danger was the fact that the oceans were so roiled, even from thousands of miles away on the Pacific coast, that there were strange currents and cross currents made that made it very dangerous to swim or to surf off the beaches in California because the water was moving around in ways that was very unfamiliar to those who uh, play in the water every day. Yeah, and while events like that, you could maybe call moods of nature and everyone is moody at times, so nature can be. But uh, moving to the next slide, um, we also make uh, nature angry. And why we make nature angry is because we aren't as smart as nature is. And that shows with the systems we invent, because nature systems are as smart as you can get it. This is a, uh, symbolizes that what we create as systems isn't nearly as smart. And this is my prestigious bathtub in my, and I apologize for that little black mold that you see there that I wasn't able to get off uh, ever since I took over the place. I was scrubbing it like crazy, but it's so deeply into the silicon there that uh, it's an interior bathroom. But uh, what else you see that filthy water isn't how I usually take a bath. Uh, this is water that uh, magically or miraculously uh, was rising up my bathtub. And uh, so this is a bad water happening for reason uh, in systems that we create in buildings where we get the water deeply into the building and then the water gets us into trouble. And a late entry uh, to your trouble you had uh, when you thought you were done with troubles, Ron, is when that smart car drove in your into your uh, front yard, it wasn't just damaging the plants, but also your irrigation. So there was another water incident, right, in, in that your project. Next slide to quickly uh, sh share with you how this ended. And so um, when I will be back in, um, in, in Honolulu, uh, this is our prestigious studio that we're broadcasting from because the Waikiki Grant is easy breezy. And the price of that is that the only place where we just got the uh, our daily uh, or weekly advice that we should retract to a place where it's quiet. So my only quiet place is this one here. And don't get too excited that I'm sitting on the toilet bowl when I'm doing the show, but I'm, I'm sitting in front of the green screen that you, too, you see to the very left. And so um, uh, it, it looks way less flamboyant than the bathrooms in your Holly Kalani, Ron, that you were sharing with us show quoting at the top <laughs> right. So uh, next slide, uh, trying to find the cause for what was making the filthy water rise up was that the uh, ray of all, all trades, um, who you see at the very left, uh, was trying to have his, um, his power drill and his snake and to get it out of there. He wasn't successful, it wasn't his fault, but his equipment wasn't strong enough. The guy on the right is the third plumber that was finally able to get it out. But in that process, next slide, the house plumber who was the second one uh, in the attempt uh, broke um, uh, a, a pipe. And so all of a sudden the hula people, which is our most prestigious famous bar at the second or first floor was coming up and saying it's raining down there. So that was the next event. So here are the guys cutting into the drywall and trying to fix the problem, next slide. And it, you know, it looks messy and it looks old, but in fact, one of our uh, owners of several units in, in the building was once um, been persuaded by someone on the board that I'm a renter, so I'm not part of the board, but the owners are, but he told me, who wanted to take them over into a, a, a very um, opportunistic job to replace all the, all the water pipes, but they are out of solid copper and so, you know, there is no uh, need to do that. That's the best you can get. So they were trying to fix the problem here. And you also see how much wasted space. I mean, I could basically, uh, you know, hide in there and no one ever <laughs> finds me because it's that big. Next slide. And the final step was that uh, this gentleman was sent. And that was at the time where we were doing uh, comparisons with both um, Portugal and related uh, Brazil. And this is Andre, who I met, who was from there and had some very interesting discussions about similarities and differences between there and our culture. 
But back to materiality, Ron, uh, this to the right, sheetrock is one of the monopolist uh, basically products in the field of the material of, of drywall. And excuse my words, I always tell the emerging generation, um, I think it's more shiprock than sheet rocks because there's nothing that rocks about gypsum, what drywall is, and you more than me experienced how dangerous it can be for your health because it's gypsum. And when gypsum gets wet, it basically molds and molds is, mold is bad for you. So um, there's no doubt that um, it doesn't have the uh, elegance um, of what your Halikalani um, you know, hotel rooms used to be, and it will never have. But also, uh, given uh, your expressed feelings, Ron, about um, the, how they look these days, I would say you better take me up on my uh, offer without expiration date to come and take a break from your disasters and relax for a couple of weeks uh, or however long you want to stay. Again, no uh, expiration on duration either. And crash with me in my humble abode of the Waikiki Grand, either when I'm not there or when I'm there on the second mattress that's available. <laughs> because I say, uh, next slide, okay, why do I talk about the best of both worlds? You're staying in my place and what do you do over then over the day, Ron? You know, uh, $750 a night for a typical Holly <laughs> room would buy a lot of meals at the Holly Colony. I know DeSoto and his friends really enjoyed their recent visit there and the meal and the service. I would hope that they're still upholding oh, yeah. the quality of that. Uh, yes, so, they are. Yeah, it is much to be sought for to uh, use a uh, Despang uh, bed and a Holly Colony restaurant. It's the best of both worlds. Thanks for the <laughs> opportunity. Well, because because you could then walk from the commons area that we complimented the management, Bali Kalani, that it stayed majorly unchanged, although thanks to your two additional pictures at the bottom, uh, which you know we don't have the too cool situation on the left, which is so 80-ish. In its best way, as we keep calling you, and and Bill Chapman calls you the best postmodern architect that he knows and that we know, and we know someone had really been sidetracked to the dark side, as Mr. Ricardo Bofill, who passed away these days. But also, we want to keep the uh, management encouraged uh, to stay in keeping everything authentic, because what we talked about last time that you De Soto saw something where it didn't happen, which is switching out this, uh, you know, original painting that we talked about quite a bit. So here's the image to the talk from last week. And we, I think we dwelled enough on that. So I think we could probably move on. So yes, Ron, you will, at night, you will crash in the Waikiki Grand. At days, you will enjoy your majorly unchanged and hopefully continuously uh, unchanged common grounds of your Halikolani. Okay, that was then and now is now, but what's next? Next slide. And that's the one that Michael couldn't wait to show. So <laughs> what in the world is that? Well, you tell us that's your baby, that's Primitiva. And that's something that's created by you and your students at the uh, University of Hawaii, in which we will see the, um, the dreamed of future of this Primitiva three and its spiral and how the water is used there, because we just saw how water is potentially damaging if it's in pipes and other things like you just happen to have in your bathroom at the at the uh, Waikiki Grand built in the 1960s. But Primitiva 3 is supposed to be a an open space in which water flows on the outside. There's a water curtain. And then on the inside, uh, we've also got on the exterior this circulating circular sort of... Uh, sluice way, or um, I can't remember the term I want, but in any case, and then there's also a place where you can shower because everybody in our fantasy world uh, just lives openly and freely out in the outdoors, even without clothes. Yeah, true paradise. And again, it's, it's another way of zoning the elements. Why Genie Gang was trying to rebrand the Waikiki bathroom in her new Howard Hughes Tower as the cool thing as the wet zone, as we 
you know, excessively talked, when water just goes wild inside of a building, there's nothing cool about it. It's nothing but trouble, right? So we keep the water where the water happens on the outside. And then we have a green zone that likes water, the excess water. And they two together basically shelter and shed the dry zone, which is the inhabitable zone. And gets us to the next slide because this shows the uh, systems, how they all work together a little bit more here in this diagram. Going to the next slide, which is, again, we talked about the three threads for mankind, and the third one is civility. So while the 10 most richest people in the world have become twice as rich through the pandemic, and I'm not a, in any kind of follower of conspiracy theories, but maybe, you know, they didn't, they didn't mind this happen. So I'm not accusing Mr. Bezos, you know, making us stay at home and sending and always ordering parcels and then making him happy, right? So who knows? But uh, I'm not, I'm not spreading conspiracy theories. These are, this is not the time to do there is, there is enough out there. But, um, you know, at the same time, the, the people at the other end of the food chain got even you know, worse off. So that's where we need to start. And that way we can't afford to build buildings the pretty expensive way we've been doing. So here is another approach. You just build a mast that probably less campers from Great Pacific, Rocky Mountain Precast has out there. But from there on, Tarzan and Jane, like as they're demonstrating here, maybe you can build your building with more sweat equity. And next slide, using also uh, local and regional materials. And while the great Fry Otto and Larry Medlin, who we had on several shows, were using steel, which we need to import, as Larry pointed out, you know, it's still a lot less to import than heavy beams. You know, it's just a couple of rolls with cables on. But here we have a substitute for steel. And what is that, guys? You got excited well, that's about basalt that. rebar. And basalt rebar, as you point out in the in the text that's on this screen, has the advantage of, first of all, it's made from basalt, which is lava. And we have an abundance of lava, particularly on the island of Hawaii, which is producing lava all the time. But also, basalt doesn't rust. And rebar getting rusty inside concrete or inside cement block is a terrible problem once you have to deal with it, not only to try to fix it, but also potentially leading to catastrophic failure, which is what happened to the Champlain Tower South condo in Florida last year, which with the resulting significant death toll. So if you can eliminate that, that's a major thing to, to consider and go for. Yeah. And then next slide, that's how it would look like. And once again, this is not an elephant leg, as we could call all the existing and current attempts to build tall on the island, which come around as clumsy and as gravity based. Well, this one is inspired by the great Fry Otto and Larry Midland and consultants as a predominantly tensile system. Only the mass is compression, but everything else is basically tensile. So a way more tropical system, more Tarzan and Janie who swing at the rope through the jungle and don't trample with big elephant legs. <laughs> so on the next slide, we will see here how that would look like if all these primitivas then start to thrive and to grow. And we would get one just in between us, the Soto. You would look down at it from up the foothills of Diamond Head when you're home, and I will look up at it from the Waikiki Grand, which you see here at the very bottom right. And unless you reason, move into it. Unless I, I, will, into it. I, will, yeah. I will, I will, of course. Yeah. I, will, I will have to, and I will want to. Yes. And I know one who wants to also, because he dreams about it, which we'll hear at the very end <laughs> of the show here. And that person also doesn't have a Primitiva in his yards of the Halikolani, which we see at the very left because uh, the common areas of there are paradisal enough already. But you might need to get something in your front yard, in your Halikolani front yard, Ron. And this is what we see on the next slide, which the articles from the store advertiser, you uh, send us um, to Soto. So you guys both tell us about this, what might be in the future for the front yard of the Halikolani. 
Well, as we just mentioned at the very beginning of the show, we have a situation where not only the ocean level is rising, but sand is going away. And this is a potential catastrophe for Waikiki. So in a stopgap measure to attempt to slow that down, there is this proposal to install all these groins in front of the hotels of Waikiki to hopefully build up sand, where in some cases it has washed away almost completely. and as we said earlier, this is a stopgap measure. This may or may not work. And one of the terrible things about trying to control sand, as we talked about trying to control water, it doesn't always work. So just putting up a wall and hoping that will stop sand from moving does not always work the way you want it to because the dynamics of sand motion is very complicated, are very complicated and not easily controlled. Yeah, it's, it's when we just had the G20 summit, you know, and some of these island, um, you know, cultures basically are the first one to experience that you just can't hide from it. Uh, seawater level rise um, is just getting at you. It's just a question of when and not if. And we know that um, you know there's a lot of research going on. Uh, Mr. Fletcher, uh, Chip Fletcher, who was the keynote speaker on the um, on the holiday um, event of Think Tech Hawaii, together with my colleague Wendy Maguro, and a bunch of other ones, are doing their very best to do the best they can and to prevent it. But we want to throw out with Primitiva three another alternative, which is based on the, you know, admitting that maybe you just can't stop nature that you made so angry. So maybe you have to make up with nature and befriend nature and just, um, you know, also uh, accept nature in its extended moods that we caused. And that gets us to the next slide. And what happens then? Well, you, if you're living in Primitiva 3, what happens is that if the air wants to blow through there at 100, over 100 miles an hour, you simply retreat into the central core of the building and let the wind blow through. And that really is one of the only things you can do in the face of a very severe storm like a hurricane. And so rather than trying to put up barriers to the wind to keep it out and failing as often happens, as you can see after hurricanes and tornadoes, you instead go with it and live with it and let it do what it needs to do without trying to keep it out or, or prevent it. Yeah, and that you can't win this is what you see that little image in the, in the center there is where the building, all the glass got blown out. And even if then code says, oh, then we got to make glass stronger, that means you got to produce more glass, you got to put out more carbon, you make nature even more angry. So that's a vicious cycle that you can't win, right? And what you just perfectly described, DeSoto, we, we know from sailors at the very bottom right, illustrating that if there's a storm coming, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to you know, put another layer of tar on the sail, but the only thing that saves you is taking the sail down. And that's what Primitiva does, as it has horizontal and vertical porosity through its netting floors. It doesn't give uh, the hurricane uh, a surface to hit, right? And that way, you know, also it can be constructed in a much lighter way. So that's what we want to throw out. And with the last slide, um, please up. Uh, we, if you know, if you want to know about this, uh, you got to visit something that uh, fellow Tropic here, Bundet Kinistakan, who we added to the poster. I hope you don't mind, uh, Bundet, because again, you finally agreed to join and not just exhibit Tropic here, Rockwood, and my humble doings in this area, but also add you. So, looking much forward to that. You want to be done, and you have to be done one of these days, and hopefully, you will all join and some of us already uh you know dreaming about this one <laughs> I yeah i might say that uh, uh recently of course uh I, i've joined with everyone else in sort of this lockdown loft lock off 
situation where you're pretty much stuck at home and then to have the home itself damaged by the water so badly, uh, I, I could start feeling sort of sorry for myself. But at night, my psyche somehow is self-protective and I, I so appreciate my REM sleep because I'm having dreams, quite happy dreams that help to take off some of the sting of how somehow some days just aren't so good to get through. And last night, I suddenly realized that I was outdoors in very dense greenery. Water was pouring on me. I realized I was actually taking a shower. I was in the nude outdoors. There was a kind of a moat, an arc of water to my left. To my right, people were walking up and down a ramp, not looking at me. I looked down at myself. No, I was, I was naked, but I wasn't embarrassed. Uh, and then it suddenly struck me, aha, I'm actually living in Primitiva. And let me tell you viewers, that would be a fine way to live. Awesome. Let's all, so now we just need to make that dream reality. That would be equally easy, right? But it starts with dreaming. Okay, so let that be the perfect concluding comment. And uh, see you all back for a more human humane architecture. We said we want to take a look at current practices on the island in the next couple of shows and assess them and share our thoughts about it. So until then, please stay uh, healthy, first of all, and happy and have uh, equally wet tropical dreams that keep you dry. Bye-bye. <laughs>